So forget about yourself. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on Him and worship.
devil sing spirit, spirit. Put your hands together. If you want the spirit to fall down, you ought to open up your mouth and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Thank you. 
Can we stand to our feet and give God some praise? Come on, let us stand. Let us stand. We're here to worship. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. And he is greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord is is worthy father we thank you jesus god for this day that you have made god we come in your presence with rejoicing and thanksgiving in our hearts god you have given us a day that we have not seen or will ever see again but god while we're here we're giving you glory god we're here we're giving you honor god we didn't make our way here god just to sit down and be silent on you but God, we're here to think back over our life, God, and remember the great things that you have done for us. God, if you have not done anything else, you already done enough. You woke us up this morning. God, you kept the blood warm in our veins. You kept us in our right minds. And God, we're here to give you glory and honor. And now, God, we pray that you look upon this service. Oh, God, have thine own way on today. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Let souls be healed set free and delivered we pray now god for elder rakeem hicks that's in the hospital god that you continue to heal his body lord as he's prepared for a procedure on tomorrow oh god we pray for the anesthesiologist we pray for the surgeon god we pray god that your shekinah glory and your angels father will camp around him in his bedside father we pray for those who are here those who are on their way and even those who had no desire God, we thank you, God, for those who are online that are watching with us. God, in other states and other countries, God, that you'll continue to meet every need now. And now, God, we pray, Father, that you move mightily. God, let somebody, God, know, come to know you in the pardons of their sins. God, look upon your manservant on today. Hide me behind your cross of Calvary. Give me preaching power. And, Lord, as we dine at your table, 
your body that has been broken, your blood that you have shed on Calvary's cross. God, we pray, Father, that you cleanse us from our sins, that God will come before your table with clean hands and a pure heart. And we thank you in advance, and we're always careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. 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 I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all parts, its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ, for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or, Greek, or Greeks, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of the smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts, we need, parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Amen. 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 To Look God at somebody tell them, I need you in the body. I need you in the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be Hallelujah. seated. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We, we need every We need body. you in the body. We need you Thank in the you, body. Lord. We need you in Thank the you, body. Jesus. Powerful passage of scripture. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, yes, church. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Good morning to those who are online worshiping with us. We thank the Lord for you, each and every one of you tuning in to, to worship with you on this first Sunday. Yes. Amen. Communion Sunday. Amen. Here at Living Grace Worship Cathedral, we pray that you are prepared to dine at the Lord's table, even in your home. We pray that everyone has received their communion um, here in the church because we'll be doing that momentarily, breaking bread um, together. So good, amen. amen, to be in the house of the Lord. We have our morning announcement. We're going to let Pastor Dawn go ahead and greet everyone. Amen. Good morning good and welcome morning. to Living Grace Worship yes. Cathedral. Amen. Do we have any first-time guest worshipers to here today? First any first time? Amen. Amen. Well, just talk, to, turn to your guest, your uh, person that's sitting next to you, and say, Good morning. It's good to see you in worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We would love to celebrate anyone who has a birthday in November. Birthdays in November. Oh, oh right, Joe, little, little Joe. Joe. <laughs> Happy Woo! birthday. Amen. Happy and, birthday. And mom goes to Robin. Amen. <laughs> Today? No, it's a birthday oh, in November. November, <laughs> November, November. Amen. 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 Anybody Any else? Amen. All right. Well, praise the well Lord. we wish everyone a happy birthday. Happy we know birthday. the Lord is blessing and we thank God for your life. And we pray that you have everlasting and everlasting everlasting wishes of whatever your heart desires. Yes. Amen. We just say live, live, live. Amen. And happy birthday. Um, brief announcements for you. Um, we have coming up next Sunday, I believe, the 14th. Okay. Our very own bishop yes, will be ministering yes, yes, out yes. in Roselle, New Jersey. And we have a sign-up list on the table. He wants to take some of the members, um, all of us, if we all can go and participate. But he wants us to, um, we want 
want to rally and support behind our bishop. We'll be leaving the, here about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. I think it's a 3 yeah. o'clock service. 4. 4 o'clock. And we're just asking if you just get on the shuttle, bus, van, whatever it is whatever that Living Grace have. is hosting, get on the bus, come support. Amen. Yeah. And we appreciate it. Um, and I think that's pretty much Sign it. Sign-up sheet is. Sign-up sheet is on the uh, table out front. Um, we also are collecting donations for turkeys and things of that nature. Um, so we do have gift baskets, um, not gift baskets, but donation boxes in the foyer on the right. Bring some items in, whatever it is, we're gonna make baskets for the community. There's also on a table on the left in the foyer on your way out. If you wanna donate a turkey, just sign up your name and we'll look for it towards the end of the month um, to get those things and we'll be making baskets for the pop, um, community um, to give out for Thanksgiving, yes. amen? amen? Amen, anything else? All right, now video announcements. Video announcements, thank you. Good morning, Living Grace Worship Cathedral. Here are your announcements. Happy birthday. If it's your birthday this month, we want to take the time to wish you a very special and blessed happy birthday. May God allow you to see many, many more. Enjoy. Join us for prayer Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. The dollar number is 515-603-3115. And the access code is 625 Nine one zero. Also, join us for Back to the Altar Prayer on Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. via Facebook Live, YouTube, and in person at Living Grace Worship Cathedral. We hope to see you there. God bless. Please mark your calendars for Sunday, November 14th at 4 p.m. for the pastoral installation of Elder Vincent E. Ford. This service will take place at Bible Way Deliverance Center located at 1149 St. George's Ave in Roselle, New Jersey where the guest preacher will be our very own Bishop Jeffrey Broughton Sr. We hope to see each and every one of you there. Living Grace Worship Cathedral and Regeneration presents BLAST, Bible Learning and Spiritual Training. Join us every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our youth and young adult recharge. Also, join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our youth church. We hope to see you all there. We need your help. Volunteer teachers are needed on Sunday mornings for our youth and teen church. For more information and to sign up, please see Youth Pastor Siandre Gosa or Minister Tonisha Gosa today. Thank you. Calling all millennials ages 19 and 35. Join us here at Living Grace Worship Cathedral every fourth Saturday at 12 p.m. for the Millennial Meetup. Come on out and join us as we go through the book Crazy Faith by Michael Todd. If you would like to participate, please make sure you purchase your book as soon as possible. The book can be purchased through Amazon, Walmart, and Target. We hope to see you all there. God bless. Join us Wednesday at 7 p.m. for Wednesday Night Recharge Bible Study. Recharge will be held here at Living Grace Worship Cathedral as well as on Facebook Live. We hope to see each and every one of you there. God bless. Please join us every Thursday night from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. for Bible studies with Pastor Tim. This will be held on Facebook Live, and we hope to see each and every one of you there. God bless. Thank you all for your attention, and please govern yourselves accordingly. God bless. It matters why we do this. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus broke bread. He gave it to his disciples. Take and eat. This is my body. He took a cup. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant. It is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of sins. It matters how we do this. Let each of us look at our lives. Let us recognize our sin. Let us see the grace of God in the body and blood of Christ, broken for us, poured out for our forgiveness. It matters that we do this. Let us eat the bread, drink from the cup, Remember the Lord's death in our place on the cross, looking 
for his return. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How many know we worship the Lord in our giving? Amen. Can we be prepared to bless the Lord on today in our giving as we get our hearts and our minds set? It's the first Sunday of this month. We want to make sure that we're able to handle the needs and the responsibility that God has given us responsibility over. God honors us in our obedience as well as in our faithfulness. Amen. I'm going to do something a little different after we have our uh, morning uh, worship and our giving. We're going to go right into um, our communion um, service um, just for this Sunday because I have another ministry assignment. Pray for me. I'm always got something on my plate. I have another ministry assignment in northern New Jersey, and so I want to make sure that we handle all of the particulars and not feel rush, amen, this morning as we uh, break bread, the body that has been broken, the blood that has been shed on Calvary's cross. And so um, our leaders will be making sure that you have, amen, your sacrament, amen, you have your hosts uh, with you on this morning. But let's prepare to give generously unto the Lord because the Lord gives unto us. We cannot beat God's giving no matter how hard we try. God gives unto us more than we can even fathom or imagine nor think. God is a good God. He's a good giver. Amen. And he's also a good rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so let's give unto him. There will be ways online. Um, our our leaders are coming with the baskets and someone will have the electronic device for those who may want to give electronically. I know we may be few in numbers, but I believe we can make it up. Amen. The way that we give out of our heart. And so give unto God as God has always given unto you. I want to bless it. Amen. Before we give it, Father, we thank you, God, for the seed that is getting ready to be sown into good ground. We want to bless and consecrate the hand of the giver, Lord, whatever their heart desire and their tithe and their offering and their sacrifice unto you, God. Lord, let it be pressed down, shake it together, build it up. Let it runneth over, God, to meet the needs of their household. Now, God, you said in your word, you will open windows of heaven, portals of heaven. God, that there will even be rivers, streams in their desert. God, that you'll bless them immensely. Now, God, look upon the Living Grace Worship Cathedral Church. God, you know what we stand in need of. Father, you know what we're facing. You know our obligations. You know our desires. You even know our wants. We pray, Father, that we can continue to do the kingdom work that you have called, chosen, and commissioned us to do. It's to save souls for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let all God's people say amen. Praise the Lord as they come. Welcome back. This is a part of the worship experience that you and I can participate in. It's offering time. This is the time that we show our appreciation and dedication unto the Lord for all of the great blessings that he has given unto us down through the years. This is a great opportunity to show the Lord that we are thankful for every blessing. The Bible declares it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And not only that, when you give unto the Lord and when you're obedient in your giving and you give a tenth of your increase as he required, the word of the Lord declares that he will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that it shall not be room enough to receive. Listen, God loves a cheerful giver. And if you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. But I got good news for you. If you sow bountifully, you shall reap bountifully. So I want to encourage you to get ready to receive the greatest harvest 
for your life. It's time to give. And I want to thank our partners. And I want to thank you in advance for sowing into good ground so that we can continue to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want to share some ways with you on how you can give right now. We have a couple of options and I want to explore with you. Number one, we have our cash app. You can give through Cash App by dollar sign LGWCDE. Also, you can give by PayPal, paypal.me.forward slash LGWCDE. Or if you want to give by your Cash App or PayPal, or there's an app called Giveafly, you can give by Giveafly by just locating Living Grace Worship Cathedral. And if you just like to mail it in, I'll give you our address, which is 364 East Main Street, Suite 206, Middletown, Delaware, 19709. So listen, you have options. Let's give unto the Lord because the Lord has always given back unto us. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for your support, your obedience, as well as your sacrifice. And those who are online, thank you for supporting us as we prepare our hearts and minds to come uh, before the Lord to break his body that has been broken and his blood that shed on Calvary's cross. The Bible reminds us and tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, Verse 23, for I've received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on this same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he hath given things, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me in the same manner. He also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it and remembrance of me for often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes the word of the lord for the people of god thanks be unto god as we prepare to take his body and i was telling somebody that there must be a breaking before there's a blessing he took the bread, the Bible declares that he broke it first, then he blessed it. And so there are things that we face in our life and we don't understand why we go through what we go through. I want to encourage you that there's always a breaking before the blessing. And so we go through breaking experiences, breaking challenges in our life. God is breaking us to redefine us, to rebuild us, to restructure us. But most importantly, in the breaking, he's blessing. He's providing. His body was broken for you that you may have everlasting life. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Take your time. God, we thank you for your broken body. You are Lord. You are Lord. And after supper, he took the cup. He said that this is the new covenant of my blood. Drink ye all of this in remembrance of me. The blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Thank you, God, for what you're already done. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our praise team is going to come and bless us. I know we're sitting a little quiet, but come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should be energized. We gained an hour, right? Got an extra hour of sleep, so y'all should be well rested. Amen. Come on, praise team. Bless us this morning.
Come on, if you know that there's no other way, there's no other way I can live without him. Lord, I can't live without you. God, I can't do this thing by myself. There is no other way, no other way, no other way. Hey, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that there is no other way. And God, if we were to try another way, it would not work. Because you said that the only way is through the Father. That no man can come to you except by him. And so, God, we thank you, God, that we're here on the right path of righteousness, leading us towards the cross of Calvary. And now, God, as we go before this word on this morning, unlock it, God. Let it fall on good ground that lies will be changed, healed, set free, and delivered. Forever let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let all God's children say amen and amen. Amen. Please be seated. Be seated. My praise team, all I can say is wow. That is one of my favorite songs. One of my favorite songs. To God be all of the glory. Thank you, musicians. Thank you for your dedication and your ministry. Amen. Few in numbers, but a powerful to God be all of the glory. It's good to see Sister Cynthia. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, let's get into this, this, this word uh, on this morning. Go with me to the gospel, the gospel according to Matthew, gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 18. Matthew 18 reading only verses 18, 19, and 20. Matthew 18, verses 18, 19, and 20. And you will find these words. Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Jesus is speaking. For where two or three are gathered together in my name we can gather together in so many different names but the word says that when we're gathered together in my name i am there in the midst of them the word of the lord for the people of god thanks be unto god i want to ask a question from my subject what are you waiting for what what are you waiting for the text says surely i say to you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loose god help me in heaven again i say if two of you disagree on earth concerning anything that they ask it will be done by my father in heaven look at somebody and ask them what are you waiting for what are you what are you waiting for? What are, I posed a question this morning. In the word of God, Jesus gives us permission and the promise and the utterance through the word of God to get the job done. The question is, what are you waiting for? God is waiting on you. God wants to hear from you. God wants to move in your behalf. But the question this morning, what are you waiting for? Why are you being stagnant? Why, why are you being doubtful? Why are you being fearful? Why are some of us being stubborn? What, what are you waiting for? God has given you power and authority on earth to move and unlock some things in heaven. God help me. Look at the text. Surely I say to you, he's speaking to us. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. 
Whatever you loose in the earth, hallelujah, there, there are some things that you need to loose in the earth. There's some things that you need to let go of. There are some things that you got to tell God, I need this thing off of me. This thing is weighing me down. This thing is carrying me. And you got to learn how to loose some stuff. Tell somebody, you got to loose that thing. You got to loose it. 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 The thoughts, the actions, the challenges it will be loose in heaven. He gives us what we need to get the job done. But the question I still ask, what what are we waiting for? We as the church, we as the body of believers, we as sons and daughters, what are we waiting for? This is an enormous power in agreement in this passage. Jesus is dealing with his disciples on how to manage conflict resolution. We find that in this text, the best resolution for any conflict, for any problem, for any sickness, or for any uh, 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 stress, or any situation is prayer. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Prayer, prayer. How many know prayer changes things? I, I wish I had a prayer warrior right there. Prayer, prayer moves mountains. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Prayer changes the outcome. Prayer changes sickness and disease. Prayer changes people. What are you waiting for? Prayer can change the mindset. Prayer changes the behavior. Prayer changes the speech. Prayer changes the commitment. Prayer changes the authority. Come on, somebody. Prayer moves God. Prayer is the key, hallelujah, that, that, that unlocks the door to Christ's heart. I heard a preacher say, uh, uh, more, more prayer, more, more power. Less prayer, less power. What are you waiting for? You got to learn how to tap into the power. You got to learn how to tap into your anointing. You got to learn how to tap into your calling. And you got to learn how to tap into your communication with God. Because the Bible declared that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. What's in your mouth? And whatever's in your mouth, what are you waiting for? How come you're sitting silent when God is calling us to speak? This is a time in the season where the church must not be silent. We must open up our mouth to declare the truth, the principles, and the precepts of God's holy word. you got to use your mouth. Hallelujah. You got to hear this. When we, when we pray, when, when we pray, McDowell's, when, when we pray, we speak in agreement. Hallelujah. We speak not only in an agreement, Chris, but we speak in agreement with one another. And when our words are in agreement, the Bible said, how can two walk together unless they agree? We must be on the same page. We have to be on one accord in this thing. You can't have church on this side by yourself a different way and then this side have church by themselves in a different way. When all God's children are on one accord and gather together, we're in this thing. Somebody said we're in it together. This side can't function with this side. Pastor Dawn, you didn't even know how profound your scripture would tie into my text when you were talking about being the one body jointed and fitted together because the elbow needs the leg bone and the leg bone needs the elbow bone and the hip bone needs the knee bone. Everything must work together in its perspective and proper position. Hallelujah. When we are in agreement with God's word, then we know that the most high God in heaven works to fulfill them. He sends, watch this, his angels to have charge over us. He moves to perform his word that it cannot return back to him. For if God speaks it, it is so. If God says it, it shall come to pass. God is not a man that he shall lie. Every word that comes out of his mouth must be fulfilled. 
Oh, you got to understand that God has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about your circumstance. He has not forgotten about your situation. He just may not come when you want him to come. He may not come fast enough as you want him to come, but he's still on time and he's still moving and he's still making ways out of no way. He's still answering prayers. Hallelujah. He's still opening up doors. He's still paving ways. He's still blessing. He's still healing. He's still providing he's still making a way he's still turning what my enemy meant for evil he's turning it around for somebody's good somebody ought to tell the Lord thank you God assures us that my covenant will not break God is a covenant keeper he's not a covenant breaker he keeps his covenant if he said it it shall be if he says it it shall come to pass if God did it before I dare somebody to shout he'll do it again if he healed me before he'll heal me again if he forgave me before he'll forgive me again if he raised me up before he'll raise us up again Ask somebody this question seriously. What are you waiting for? Because God is going to be God. And every enemy be a liar. God is going to do what God says he'll do. What are you waiting for? God is waiting for you. When you move, he moves. When you worship, he answers. When you pray, he listens. What are you waiting for? You got to learn how to tap into that thing and get back to a holy place. Because the wages of sin is death. Wages, sin, it's death. The gift of God is everlasting life. He, he keeps covenant. That's why he promised us in, in verse 19, Brother Joe, he promised. We find these words there. He says that if two of you shall agree, can, can we agree on something? <laughs> Oh, my God, we, we can agree to disagree. We got different opinions and different values and different concerns. But one thing, can we just agree on that? If the two of us will come together, touching and agreeing on anything on earth, that anything that we shall ask from God. That means, Quentin, I'm in agreement with you that you need God to do something for you. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to touch and agree because I want to confirm that same blessing. She read in the text that those who mourn, you mourn with them. Those who rejoice, you rejoice with them. So we're in this thing together. We got to agree on this thing together. We got to be on one accord in this thing together. I got to walk with you. What good is it if I'm pulling you down? What good of it? How good am I if I'm tearing you down? How good am I if I'm not helping you up? And this is the season that we, as the believers of God, we have to be able to stand together and be each other's brother's keeper. It's no race. We're in this thing together. It doesn't benefit me to get there before you, and it doesn't benefit you I mean, to get there before me. We're in this thing together. I got to make sure that you make it just as much as you got to make sure that I make it. We're responsible. We have a colonel in the house, and I guarantee you one of her responsibility was to make sure no man or woman is left behind. When we walk out there, we better walk out there. Now, we could have fussed and cussed in the back room. We might have had a disagreement in the back room. But when we walk out there, we better walk out here two or three together. Standing together. Letting the enemy know that we cannot be moved. We do not negotiate. We're not going to be shook. We're not going to run. We're not going to abandon. We're not going to abort. But we're going to stand until God moves. I'm going to stand until God answers. I'm going to stand until God gives healing. I'm going to stand until God makes a way out of no way. Is there any standards in the building? What, what are you, what are you wait, waiting for? Because... He says that these things will be done for them by the Father which is in heaven. For if two or three that are gathered together in my name, I'm, I'm in the midst of it. God, it's not leaving you alone. Ooh, hallelujah. It's, let me tell you something. Can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? It's not always the devil. <laughs> we give him way too much credit. 
Uh, 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 it's not always the devil. God has a way of getting your attention. And God has a way of chastising they who love. Any parents in the building? And you may chastise your child differently than somebody else. But a chastisement is a chastisement. That means sit down and don't move. Be still. You're on punishment. No going outside. And if you was my parent, they talked in a different language. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 but 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 those are ways as a parent a man gets their child prepared honor the mother and the father because they have rules right they have bylaws they have things that we must follow amen coming up some of y'all came over real rough Amen. They, that soul spare the child to ride, however that go. I don't want to quote it because I, I quiver and have a flashback. Amen. Somebody, y'all, y'all, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But you're better because of the strict discipline. You're better because there was structure. You're better because somebody had charge and authority over your life. It's no different than the word of God. God would definitely chastise those who he loves, his sons and his daughter. And when we get out of line, God is looking down like, really? He getting the credit? The blood of Jesus. The devil is always busy. The devil is always, he looking like, really? Devil sitting there like, nah, nah, dog, you got the wrong one. It ain't me this time. I have to go to God to get permission to touch you. I can't just touch you arbitrarily because I want to touch you. God has to get out of the way. So now, did not he say that to Joel? For God, do you have anyone else? That I can trouble? He said, hey, well, I do got one more. Have you, have you tried my servant Job? And through the pain and through the struggles and through the death and through the abandonment, he lost it all, but he didn't lose his faith. Even his own wife said, well, wait a minute, Job, what, what did you do so bad that you have not even cussed God yet? He said, though they slay me yet, will I still trust him? What are you waiting for? If he did it for Job, don't you know God would do it for you? And he gave back unto him everything. And somebody shout, and then some. Hallelujah. I I, want to teach you this. This this word, sympathy. It's this word that, that we must have one for another. We got to be concerned and passionate about the well-beings of those who we serve next to. Come on, somebody. We are brothers. We are. I don't see color. I hate when people talk to me about color. And I understand that that's the reality of the world. But the God that I serve does not define me by my skin. When I go to heaven, there's not going to be a gate for the Jews. There's not going to be a gate for the Palestinians. There's not going to be a gate for the Hebrews. There's not going to be a gate for the Greeks. There's not going to be a gate for the Italians. There's not going to be a gate for the Presbyterians. There's not going to be a gate for the Africans. There's not going to be a gate for the Africans. I just want to get in the gate. And when we change the mindset and have sympathy... That we're all curated in the image of God. Hallelujah. The God that I serve, one Lord, one faith. Well, I can go into a white church and feel God. I can go in a black church and feel God. I'm not going to church for a color. I'm going to church for experience. I need God to do something for me in my life. I don't care if I'm driving down the road and I'm having a nervous breakdown and they looking at me, why are you in here? I ain't here for you. I'm here for the experience. Where is God? That's all I need to know. When I come to church, I ain't looking like what you're wearing, how you're singing, how you, where is God? That's all I need to see. I want more of him. Because everything else is a distraction. I need to be in his presence. And there's a value. Watch this. When we unite in prayer. Christian, when we can seriously tell somebody I'm praying for you and not use that as a word just to get you out my face. Oh, y'all ain't going to like me. 
Hallelujah. Tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm talking about when you are an intercessor. And when you're laying before God, not for yourself, but for somebody else. When, what, what are you waiting for? When was the last time you said, I'm going to go in this closet. I'm going to go in this war room. I'm going to go in this prayer room. And I'm just going to lay it out for my brother. I'm going to lay it out for my sister. I know I got needs. I know I got burdens. I know I got problems. I know I got situations. I know I got isms and schisms. But it's not me. Not about me today. Not today. This one needs me. This, this prayer right here is to save somebody's life. This prayer right here is to bring hope to a hopeless generation. This prayer right here is a prayer that's going to unite us. Hallelujah, somebody. What are we waiting for? Because we have to understand, I'm almost there, that we can fight this battle together. The enemy already know that there's division. It doesn't start in the 21st century. Division started over 2,000 years ago. Paul even addressed the church at Ephesus on division amongst them. In Corinthians, and division among them. We already knew that through generations and generations, people are going to be people. Churches is going to be churches. This is why this sex is so profound, because it was dealing with the conflict in the church. And Jesus was teaching his disciples how to deal with resolution. And basically what you take away from that is prayer. All the times we sit and we want to come up with our own arbitrarily thoughts on how it should be and what it should be and what this supposed to be and how. But where was prayer? Where was God? I tell people all the time, where's God in this? Because if God is not in this, I'm not in it. I've gotten up. Debbie, I've gotten up and walked out a lot of meetings because I didn't feel God there. And I ain't had no problem. People looked at me. I got up and gathered my stuff because I don't deal with foolishness. I don't got time for conflict. I don't got time for drama. I don't have time for be sitting there because guess what? I can't get my time back. I could have been using that time more usefully doing something for the kingdom. I'm not going to sit here and listen to y'all going back and forth over nonsense. Where's God at? Obviously, he ain't invited into this room. I must be in the wrong room. Let me get on. Let me get moving. Amen. Y'all ain't trying to bring him in here. Y'all don't want him in here. So let me go find where he at. We have to come together and pray. Watch this. Against the wickedness. Hallelujah. I was just talking. I'm done. I promise you because I got to get to Jersey. I was talking to, to someone the other day and, and I literally said, uh, Miss O, that we're trying to force the past to be our present because we have not really changed the mindset of what we've been facing and going through this pandemic pastor Dawn, we're coming out of it and we're trying to squeeze our feet in a shoe isaiah that don't fit no more we have outgrown the shoe we have outgrown the pants we have outgrown the dress in this pandemic and we're trying to make it fit because we don't know nothing better than what we used to do. And God's saying that if you would ask anything in my name, I'm trying to do a new thing. I'm trying to elevate you to a new level. I'm trying to take you to a better place. But you too busy trying to hang out in the backyard of familiarity. And you're stuck there and you're not trying to move. And so when you come into the new season, you're trying to force it when it's not flowing right. Trying to force it. You're trying to make other people adapt to something that God had already buried. Oh, God, help me. That's another message right there. God had to kill some stuff. And we over here trying to dig it back up. Because we don't want to embrace the new. We don't want to embrace what God is speaking. We don't want to embrace what God is trying to do. Because oftentimes we become very scared to change. Obviously, culturally, change is not easy for a lot of people. But we got to learn how to trust God through the process. 
Obviously, we ain't dealing with touch tone and rotary phones, and you're doing fine. Obviously, you don't got a, a, a doggone 25-foot uh, a phone cord going from the living room to the bedroom, down to the basement, that wrapped around the kitchen three, that, that, maybe that's just in my house, that wrapped around the kitchen three times, and you still had a good six feet left on it. But, but you're doing fine. You're not rocking afros and bell bottoms and platform shoes, but you're doing fine. You're not on Apple computers when the screen was only green. Oh, y'all don't know about that. Amen. The screen was only green. Amen. You had pushed this big old button to turn on, and it felt like it took five hours to IBM to power up to start running. But you're doing fine. Life is always moving. It's never the same. And we got to come together. We got to get on board. We got to accept. We got to continue to serve. We got to continue to trust. We got to continue to rely. And we got to continue to worship together. Psalm writer said, let us break bread together. <laughs> ah. The upper room could not happen until they were together. We can't move this mountain. We can't move this ministry. We can't move the community. We can't move the world. We can't move situations. We can't move government unless we are together. One accord. I need you. Just as much as you need me. What are you waiting for? I'm done. Opportunities are presenting itself. You have power. You have power. You have power. I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Tap into that. Oh, my God, I can shout right there. I can preach that, but I, I ain't going to go no further. You can really do something productive, powerful, positive when we're together. I say to you that if two agree, he doesn't ask for much, just two or three. I should, I need you to be in agreement with me. And I need to be in agreement with you. Amir, I need you to be in agreement with me. And I'll be in agreement. Kaylin, I need you to be in agreement with me. If two or three agree on earth concerning, watch this. Anything. Take the limitations off God. Hallelujah. Stop putting limits on God. Anything that Isaiah and I can agree on anything. Concerning anything that they ask. It will be done for them. By my father. In heaven. When two or three that are gathered together in my name. Not the name of Buddha. Not the name of Confucius. Not the name of Martin. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will. Be with them. Father, we thank you. That God, the question of the day, what are we waiting for? God, you have already prepared the table. God, you have already rolled out the red carpet. God, you have already set the tone and the atmosphere. God, you have already dressed 
the bride and the bridegroom. What are we waiting for? The work was already done 2,000 years ago when you laid down your life. You died for us. A horrific death just for us. Nails in your hands. Nails in your feet. Crown of thorns in your head. 39 stripes on your back, piercing in your side. What are we waiting for? You died so that we might live. So God, help us to come together on one accord, two or three of us. Don't take much, but God, send the faithful. The faithful few, God, that is willing to do the work. That's willing to come down off the wall, but to build. Stay holy. Stay committed to remain faithful to the end. Help us, God, that you will examine our hearts and our minds. And if you find anything, Lord, that is not like you, Jesus, have mercy on us. Forgive us of our sins. Wash us in your precious blood. Blot out all of my transgression and create in me a clean heart and a renewed spirit. Lord, for every thought, for every speech, for every meditation, for every action that is not in line with your will. God, I'm sorry. Forgive us now. Give us clean hands and a pure heart. Anoint us a fresh new anointing. From the crown of our head down to the soles of our feet. Help us to walk righteously before you. Order our steps before you. Guide us through the path, God, for your name's sake. And anything, God, that we ask in your name, Father, we know it shall be given. And anything that we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And anything, God, that we loose in heaven shall be loose in the earth and so god we lose blessings now oh god increase now healing now deliverance now let it fall god let it fall down from heaven on us rain on us god rain on our homes rain on our family rain on our circumstance and our situation we need a touch from you god oh god turn it around heal my children god deliver them father Heal my husband, deliver him, God. Heal my wife, deliver her, God. Heal my relationships, God, my broken heart. God, whatever it is, these thoughts, thoughts that are running rapid in my mind, we come against mental illness and dysfunctions and poverty, but we speak blessings, we speak life. You shall live and not die. God has work for you to do. God has purpose for you in your life. God is not through with you yet. He's just begun a good work in you. And it shall be completed and accomplished. That no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And any tongue that rises up against thee shall be condemned. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Cover our mouth, God. Help us to speak holy, speak righteous, speak truth. Bring power to life. Help us to be the light of the world. That God, that we illuminate in every dark area of this world. We pray now, God, for the elected officials in government. Those who may charge and rule. God, you are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And the government shall be upon your, and the government shall be, and the government shall be upon your shoulders. The God of peace, the God of justice. We pray, Father, for the lives that were lost in Houston, Texas. Those children, God, that was trampled and crushed, Father. We pray, God, even in this season of thanksgiving, God, that you'll comfort the mothers, comfort the fathers, comfort the family, God. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, God. We pray, God, still for the missionaries in Haiti, God, that, Father, you'll release the whole, God. In the name of Jesus, 
We pray for our community. We pray for our streets. We come against gun violence. We come against all types of heinous crimes and killings, God. We rebuke the hand of evil. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. And we are confident and careful to always give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Come on, put your blessed hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The doors of the church is open. If there's somebody here by the sound of my voice and you're without a church home and you're looking for a place that you could connect and grow and God will continue to work out your soul. So I want to say this. A lady joined on last week online. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's not always going to happen in the house. She sent a message to the church and she says, I've been following this church for over a year and she connected and committed to continue to follow this church permanently and we thank God uh, for her she may be watching I'm sorry I don't have your name in front of me but we want to thank God for you but there may be others online that want to connect and grow and allow God to work on you and your soul salvation if there's one just connect with one of our leaders or just raise your hand or fill out on like you did online or on uh on the facebook and we'll connect with you and we'll let you know what you need to do brother dan connected with us last week so we thank god for him as well amen amen and so he's been here he's been working and we just honor the lord if there's any candidate for water baptism you want to be baptized maybe rebaptized, go down in a watery grave we'll do it we'll do it if there's one is there's one if there's online thank you thank you all right. Well, praise the Lord. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. We look forward to seeing everyone out on Wednesday night for our recharge. Amen. Bible study. Thank you. Elder Stacy did a phenomenal job. Powerful, powerful. Pastor Dawn and I had a minor procedure on Wednesday. I call them the his and hers procedure. And, uh, you know, we were just recuperating, recuperating and recovering from that, that, that procedure. And I thank God for uh, Elder um, stepping up to the plate and continue to let the work of the Lord and the message and the ministry go forth. So thank her again. Amen. Amen. We'll see you on Saturday. Don't forget back to the altar. And listen, if you want to roll with us, there's no charge. Just get on the bus. Get on the bus. We're going to shoot up to New Jersey real quick. We're going to have a good time in the Lord and make our way on back down. But Elder Vincent Ford has been a tremendous and a big blessing to our ministry, and we want to be a blessing to him as we install him as the assistant pastor of the Bible Way Deliverance Center in Roselle, New Jersey. So please, I know I'm letting you out early today, so you got time to stop by the info booth, sign your name, sign up, how many persons is going. So that would determine what size uh, vehicle we need for uh, next uh, Sunday. We're going to be leaving shortly after church. We'll have a little brown bag for you to grab. Amen. So we head up there and head on back down. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. I know you don't want to go home, but Mama said you got to get up out of here. Amen. To God be all the good. Good to see you, Regina. Amen. Continue to be praying once again for Elder Rakim as he's in the procedure and in the hospital that God will continue to heal and restore his body. Can we intercede for him on this week? Can we go before God in two or three? Can we agree on that, y'all? For him, amen, he needs our prayers. He needs our prayers. He needs our support. And you may know others. Let's, 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 let's lock in this week and pray for those who definitely need our prayer. I'm not talking about the new car and the new shoe prayer. I'm talking about life prayer. Somebody, life depends on your prayer. Amen. So let's pray one for them. Father, we thank you what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. We thank you for this worship experience. But God, we thank you that we're not waiting no more. We thankful, God, that we have an understanding that, God, we must connect together in a unity. Because united we stand, divided we will fall. And we can do more together and so god thank you for the sons and daughters of bringing us together in one faith one lord and one baptism as we depart from here but never from your presence go with us keep us in perfect peace as our minds stay on you let no weapon formed against us prosper 
And now to who's able to keep us from falling, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you. Go in peace. And remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I love you. Jesus loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. Have a blessed week, everyone.